Hey and welcome back to the Frugal Spender channel. In this video I'm going to break down why you should not stop paying into your pension regardless of what pension you have and I'll explain why a pension is likely to be the biggest wealth building tool to ensure that you have the ability to live a comfortable life in retirement. I will walk you through some examples and hopefully give you plenty to think about. And most importantly, if you aren't paying into your workplace pension, that you at least consider doing so. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And if you get any value from this video at all, make sure you hit the like button. If you asked me just two years ago whether I was an investor, I would tell you you're ridiculous and I do not have the money to do that sort of thing. That's for rich people. Duh. What I didn't know, however, is that because I hadn't opted out of the workplace pension I was in, the money that was being taken out of my paycheck was actually being invested in the stock market, albeit I wasn't consciously doing it. I like to think of my previous self as an unconscious, undeliberate investor. And this is something that the majority of UK citizens are. As of 2020, 88% of eligible employees are participating in a workplace pension. Without a doubt, this is down to auto-enrolment and not the pension-savvy average citizen because we all know the average person who enters the workforce, sadly, isn't thinking about their pension. Auto-enrolment currently sits at 5%, being taken directly from your salary. This includes tax relief and your employee contributes 3%. It isn't until I opened a book about pensions, which sounds pretty boring, I know, that I began to appreciate the power that they hold. Pensions are complicated products, so I don't intend on walking you through the fine details of them. Rather, I will endeavour to explain their importance and why you need to be paying into one, and if you already have one, why you shouldn't be stopping paying into it. The last couple of years have been tough for many people, and the pandemic caused uncertainty and forced many people to focus on the essentials. If this is you, be sure to watch the video all the way through and come up with a plan as to how you're going to get back on track. Unfortunately, many of my colleagues that I used to work with in the public sector did exactly this, with a short-sighted view of having a little bit more money coming in in payday. So a pension, put in simple terms, is a way you can save and invest throughout your working life so that when you reach your later years, you can withdraw money to pay not only for the essentials, but also for whatever lifestyle you choose. Regardless of your age, this is something you should really be thinking about. Generally speaking, there are three types of pensions. Defined contribution, defined benefit, and the state pension. Like I previously said, I'm not gonna go deep into these, but I'm gonna give you an overview. So, a defined contribution pension is the type of pension that most people watching this video are gonna have. This is where you build up a pot of money by sacrificing a percentage of your monthly pay to be directed into a retirement fund that is invested wherever the company sees fit. The company you work for will generally match a contribution up to a certain percentage, probably around three or 5%. It is important to recognize whatever match you get from the employer really is free money. This is tax-free money that's gonna help your part of money grow over time. SIPs or self-invested personal pensions are also defined contribution pensions. SIPs work in a similar way to a workplace pension, but you have more control and freedom over other pensions. You're in complete control of how and where your money is invested and make the decisions that determine how your pension pot performs. Now this of course has pros and cons. For many, your pension being invested by somebody else is a good thing as you may make emotional decisions. However, if you have an interest in investing and want to squeeze out as much money as you can from your pension pot, a SIP might be a good idea. If you're self-employed or just want to have another pension running alongside your existing pension, a SIP is a great way of doing this for two reasons a tax double whammy, if you will. It's a tax wrapper and you get tax relief. So what on earth is a tax wrapper? Put simply, having your money inside a tax wrapper means your money is in an account that wraps around your investments or savings to offer some protection from tax, as long as the money stays within the wrapper. So this applies to ISAs as well as pensions. When it comes to pensions, this is very useful because the entire time your money is inside this account, it won't be hit with tax meaning there will be more of it to compound over time. And compound interest is the magic ingredient for savers looking to grow long-term investments. Once described by Albert Einstein as the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest is basically interest that you earn on the interest that's already built up on the savings. Because it works by accumulating over time, compound interest can turn a small savings pot into a significant amount of money when left untouched. And that's why pensions are great vehicles, because it doesn't allow you to touch the money 
to later in life, whether it's 55 or 65, which is one thing you need to think about. It's going to be access. But I see it as a benefit because it means that you aren't going to touch that money. You physically can't touch it. You're not legally allowed to take that money out. And as a result of that, the money has to compound over time. It forces you to use time to your advantage. For more on the effect of compounding, check out the video above. Now, it's important to remember that pensions do still get taxed, just like your income does, but it's on the way out when you actually reach retirement age and start withdrawing from it. But the beauty is you get to build a larger pot as a result of the wrapper. Okay, so tax relief. Remember earlier when I talked about free money? Well, here it is again. If you're putting money into a SIP, that means you have already been taxed on the money that you're putting in. Your SIP provider will then claim back tax relief from the tax man on your behalf, depending on what tax bracket you sit in. As a basic rate taxpayer, you will receive a 20% boost on whatever you put in to your pension. As a higher rate taxpayer, you will get 40%, and as an additional rate taxpayer, you will get 45%. So as you can see, the government are trying pretty hard to incentivize people to plan and put money away for their own retirement. And the reason for this is it lifts the burden from them by using so much money from the public purse for state pensions. More on that shortly. So I hope I don't need to say much more as to why it makes sense to not stop paying into a defined contribution pension. For money to grow exponentially, you need time. It is so easy to say, I'll stop now and restart it next year because guess what? Life happens and you're probably not gonna do it. Let's take a look at a defined benefit pension, also known as a final salary pension. A defined benefit plan differs to a defined contribution pension plan in one important way. Rather than building up a pot and withdrawing from that pot when you retire, you're given a set amount you're gonna be repaid at retirement until you die. So this shifts the risk from the employee to the employer, which is why defined benefit pensions are becoming more and more rare. Defined benefit pensions are probably the best pensions that you can get. They are reserved for high positions in some big corporations or in the public sector, jobs in the NHS, fire or police. Even these defined benefit pensions though are being cut where they can to reduce the risk from the employer or in the public sector's case, you, the taxpayer. So they generally have moved to a career average scheme, which is where each year you pay into the scheme, the set amount that you'll be paid from retirement until you die increases depending on how much you earn that year. And as a result, this is significantly less than the public sector used to get. However, it's still better than most. If you do have a defined benefit pension, you really should do everything in your power to remain in that scheme if you can. When I worked in the public sector, I knew way too many people that either never started paying into their defined benefit pension or pulled out when times got tough. This is so damaging to their future and is the reason why I talk about having a strong financial foundation, meaning no debt and an emergency fund in place. The last thing you want when you get to retirement is having close to nothing or regretting not sacrificing a small percentage of your salary throughout your working life. Learning to sacrifice a little bit now for a lot in the future is a skill that you're gonna to need to be good at. So that leaves us with the state pension. The state pension dates back to 1908 when it was known as the old age pension. The first ever state pension was paid on the 1st of January 1909 to around 500,000 people aged 70 or more. Pensioners received between 10 and 25p per week, which is just slightly less than they get now. Over the years, the state pension has evolved into what we have today. You pay national insurance throughout your working life and you'll be entitled to state pension at whatever state pension age is. This is money that the government gives everybody, regardless of what you earned previously, in an attempt to give a decent standard of living to everybody less fortunate. The current state pension age is 66. However, for me, when I retire, it's gonna be 68. To find out when your state pension age is, follow the link in the description box below. Currently, to qualify for the full state pension, you're gonna to need to contribute 35 years worth of national insurance. You can contribute less, no less than 10 years though, and you can get a smaller state pension. But realistically, that's not what you wanna be striving for. And if you wanna check your national insurance record to see how many years you've accrued so far, follow the link below and log in to your government gateway. So currently the full state pension sits at 179 pounds 60p per week or 9,339 pounds 20 per year. Clearly this is not a lot of money and other actions should be taken to ensure that we have a bigger nest egg than that. Truthfully, the way I look at the state pension is that it's just an added bonus to whatever I can actually build up myself. There is speculation about whether the state pension is even going to be around when millennials and younger retire. 
And whether it's there or not, I think the safe bet is to assume that it's not going to be. The truth is you cannot rely on the government to carry you through retirement. The last thing you want to do is panic about money in your later years. That doesn't change the fact though that you need to keep an eye on your national insurance record to make sure that you qualify for the highest possible state pension. If you are paid via PAYE or pay as you earn, this will all be done for you. But if you're self-employed, you've got to make sure you talk to an accountant to make sure that you're paying the correct national insurance to qualify. If you don't pay into a pension or are considering stopping yours, I really hope this video has made you second guess that. Even if you're paying into a pension but don't really understand the benefits, I hope you have a little more knowledge that can help you plan for the future. Do not be put off by the fact that you cannot access that money until you're older. So please let me know your thoughts and experiences in the comment section below. And remember to subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell icon to be notified when I release videos in the future.